Ask Evelyn Live, where we answer your questions about compost, recycling, and other trashy topics. I'm Becca Fong, and I am your host, and we are super excited to bring you an awesome episode today about paint and what to do with all of that extra paint that is hiding out in your garages and closets. I'm to get my co-host in here. So quick reminder, you guys, we are revisiting a question that you guys sent us last year, and we hear a lot from you guys. And it's a good reminder to definitely send them to us. You can send them to us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or to askevelyn at seattle.gov. So, hi, Pat. Hey, how's it going, Becca? It's going good. So do you want to introduce yourself really quickly for anyone who's joined us for the first time? Sure thing. I'm Pat Kaufman. I'm the Commercial Recycling and Composting Program Manager for Seattle Public Utilities, help businesses recycle and compost. So, yeah, happy to be here. Awesome. So, Pat, I was telling folks before you logged on that we are revisiting a question that came to us from someone last year about a really important topic. So something that is near and dear to just about all of us. Um, so, uh, yeah, do you want to get into it and reread our question from our... Uh, from I see your props. Got, you got I nice got props, props going this week. Looking Absolutely. good. Okay, so the question, this is a repeat question, as Becca mentioned. Uh, I have about 20 cans of paint in my garage that I need to get rid of. It's a mix of oil-based, latex, and stain. Uh, they also have varying amounts of paint still in them. What can I do with them? And this was from, uh, I don't see who it was from, Becca, but anyway. Oh, it's from Daryl, which was okay. great. So Daryl, thank you so much for writing into us. And well, the quick- Yeah, quick answer, go for the, it, Becca. The quick answer is we are so excited that now your acrylic latex paints can now be uh, taken back to locations for recycling. Daryl, right. um, I don't know if you actually got around to dealing with your uh, 20 cans of paint before, but now we have some new options for you. So there are participating locations that Pat and I are gonna to talk to you a little bit more about that you can now take this stuff back to. So, so yeah, Pat- Yeah, take care. Yeah. I mean, it's, you know, as we've talked about, it's a, uh, Extended producer responsibility, EPR, is the term that, that we use in the industry to talk about how manufacturers are on the hook for taking care of a waste, you know, their own product. Totally. Uh, managing that, hopefully through a closed loop system where they can take it back in, manage it, and maybe even derive from that waste stream a little bit of feedstock for them to be able to make more product. But it's funded by the manufacturers. I mean, there's, there's funny mechanisms that go into EPR structures sometimes. This one is going to uh, account for a fee that will be charged on every gallon, I think, of can yeah. a person buys. Yeah, there'll be a, a fee added to that. But that, you know, getting the manufacturers to the table to take on the ownership of, of the collection and, and management of recycling and disposal and whatnot is a, is a big accomplishment you know, by agencies uh, in our state and in King County and such. So um, it's, a good, it's a good shared kind of effort because previous to this, there wasn't an option for latex paints in, yeah. in our area, really. No, absolutely for, and when we, Daryl, when we originally answered your question, for latex paints, really the only option is to dry it out and discard it as garbage. So if you had a can yeah. that was mostly full, it's kind of a giant pain. And we get that. The reason we wouldn't take it is that that paint, once it gets into a compactor, is just a mess, right? So we need it to be solid to collect it safely. So now, instead of asking you guys to buy, like, all this kitty litter to dry it out, what you can do is you can take it back to these participating locations. I was looking it up a little bit earlier. And for, you know, folks like myself in West Seattle, McClendon's Hardware down in White Center. Nice. Is a location. Classic that you can take it back to. And Pat, you said that there's a location pretty close to you in the North End that will take it yeah, back as well. There's Greenwood Hardware, one of my favorite stores in the area. And then also just Miller Paint, Sherwin and Williams, you know, there's paint stores. I think as the program grows, it just launched this year. It just yeah. launched so um, more recently. And so I think as the program gets going, there's going to become more and more collection points, more stores will participate. Um, because you know, once you, like any kind of business, if you're participating in a helpful program to your customers and they will, they will look kindly um, upon you, maybe buy product from you. Exactly. So 
it's not a bad thing to create some traffic through these stores. Not at all. And that was actually a really big part of getting this whole legislation passed is that Washington is the 10th state when this passed in May of 2019 to do a paint extended producer responsibility program. And the retailers were totally on board because they're like, absolutely, like you were saying, Pat, like it'll bring people to the store, right? Like we yeah. all bought these paints for mm -hmm. all these different things and we need paints often. So if you're bringing something in, you're like, oh, hey, I wanted to pick something else up. So there will be lots more locations. We're going to put a link to the Paint Care website in our show notes so you guys can type in your website or your, sorry, your websites, your zip codes and find locations that are near you. So there are probably, I think, six or seven throughout Seattle right now. But, you know, I think always checking back for more. Yeah. One other tip that Paint Care has on their website that I wanted to throw out to you guys, because this just started like this month, in the month of April 2021, if you've got tons of paint, if you're like me, this is like a fraction of what is going on in my garage. Um, you want to make sure that you call them first and say, hey, I've got, yeah. you know, 10 gallons of latex paint. Like, can I come and bring them in tomorrow? Because they're ramping up, too. So, yeah. I mean, as anxious as I am to get rid of the paint, um, I also realize it has been in my garage for mm, 10 plus years. Yeah, yeah, it yeah, could yeah, probably yeah. hang out in my garage a little yeah. bit longer to be recycled. So, but it's really fantastic to have this option. There are some paints though, Pat, we've talked about before. Not all paints are created equal and some are right. not covered by this program. Sure, sure. This is, this is basically, as you mentioned, it's, you know, mostly the latex space of, of paints. Um, and it's, what's great about it also is that it's, it's actually pulled in, it's recycled. They're actually gonna right. mix the paint up, make a couple different shades of grayish tan or whatever, and then redistribute that, sell that through some of the uh, recycled paint uh, vendors that exist, yep. like Metro Paint and others like that. So Green there's going to be, yeah. it's really neat. It's, it's a waste prevention model. It's not like you know before when latex, the only option we really had was solidify it dry it out right. and then dispose of it and that's that's too bad when it's a perfectly good you know portion of a can oh, of paint yeah. that could be mixed with other paints and made into some some I don't know, off white color <laughs> and so that's that's a good thing it's a waste prevention model program oh, as well and so i wanted to great. point out um you know sometimes you you buy a house and it's got a whole bunch of paint in the garage the main wor wording you're looking for, I apologize, it's backwards, but you're looking for acrylic latex paint. That's right. really what you're looking for. Right. There are also oil-based paints, solvents, yeah. all of those things are not covered by this program. And those should go to household hazardous waste. So we've talked a lot about those on this show before. We have two locations, one at, in the north end of, of Seattle at 125th and Stone Way, and then one location in South Seattle located across from the South Transfer Station. So those are the options for all the non-latex based paints yep. and solvents. So and that's great. Our HHW teams are doing a great job collecting these, you know, really can be dangerous materials. We certainly don't want any of this stuff going down the drain. No. That's another big yeah. push. It's like, you know, don't pour it out behind the garage. Don't don't pour it down the drain. <laughs> Just Please set no. it aside and plan yeah. your trip and get it back to HHW. There's two HHWs in Seattle, one in the South one in North, look them up, you know, you can do that. It's, it's the right thing to do. The other thing about, we didn't uh, talk about this, but, but preserving your paint. When I went to grab my, my uh, props, I, I grabbed this one. This was, oh, a, yeah. we just reused a, a container. And this is something that one can do to preserve their paints longer is, this is a tip that I heard from a painter, is you put a little uh, stretch film between the lid and the can, and it just keeps air from migrating in there and then you know what ends up is you end up with one of these dry right. out cans like instead of this, this is just, i mean it's gonna be toast yeah there's no way that that's okay. gonna be a happy can of paint and you start to try and stir it up and all those like rust flakes fall <laughs> in and then you you know so so for for a patch you know patch job when yeah. you know you're you're finishing up the can maybe transfer the can into a jar as well nice. that's another tip to kind of then you can kind of see the color, you can label it for which room it went to in your house, and you just kind of keep track of your paint, manage your paint better is another way okay. of like preserving yep. waste prevention kind of thing. Get the most so, out of it, right? Yeah, yeah. No, those are those are awesome tips, Pat. I'm like, how do I do that? <laughs> you know, as I buy like a can of touch-up paint or fix a wall or something, you know, sometimes you won't go back to it for several years. Yes. Right? And then you're like, wait a minute, I would love to match right. this color. What is it? And if you still have some, even if it's a little amount in a jar, that's fantastic. Yeah. So awesome. All right. Well, Daryl, thank you so much for writing to us last year. Yeah. You joined us to watch. 
um, really check it out. Paintcare.org latex paint is now on the recycling list, which is fantastic. So, and for all of the other paints, uh, oil-based and then solvents and thinners, those go to household hazardous waste. Yeah. So, all right, you guys keep those questions coming. So we're now at the portion of our show where we talk about our weekly waste tip. And I feel like Pat, you kind of gave us a really awesome one. I kind of <laughs> did. That should be <laughs> my did. tip. You know, my tip is like preserve the paints you have. Exactly. One thing that I was thinking about, we could talk to you guys about since it's Earth Month and we were talking about, you know, kind of making Earth Day every day. And our last show was talking really about those things that you can do every day. It was interesting. I have two young kids and I was asking them, you know, what are you guys going to do? What are some ideas that you guys have to yeah. raise, you know, that's going to help care for the Earth? And it was really interesting. They're pretty little. So my littlest one said, he's like, you know what, instead of throwing all those little scraps of um, cloth out, and he's wearing through clothes really fast. He said we could keep them and turn them into something else. So his goal is to make a blanket out of some right. of those things, which I thought was great. You know, we'll see. He's got lots of ideas. Um, but I appreciate that he, he has shifted his thinking about when something is still usable, right? I mean, his favorite shirt might be torn or super dirty, but we can still do something else with it, which I thought was fantastic. That's great. And then uh, my slightly older kid who's in elementary school, you know, she said, instead of putting stuff into the compost cart, we can do backyard composting, which we have started this year, which is really fantastic. Um, because then you're really closing that loop right where you are, which is really awesome. Yeah. So you're saying that one. That's, a, that's great. That's so right. That's so apparent to a, a child right. to see like, well, why, why are we putting it in this green cart and a truck takes away? Let's keep that good stuff here. It's awesome. Right. And so we, we have the advantage that we can do that. And then the other thing she thought about is that we're uh, starting up some new garden spaces in our garden. And so instead of tearing out all the grass, she has taken some cardboard boxes. She's like, let's sheet mulch, you know, we'll take tape and the labels off and we'll put that down to suppress the weeds. And then it breaks down over time, which I thought was really great. I thought they were good Absolutely. ideas. And it's just that shift, that mind yeah. shift of looking it's at the so way. So unfortunate to see like the black plastic underneath people's like plantings or they even that that landscape cloth. It's plastic you're introducing yeah. to your yard. Let's let's use cardboard. It will just break down and disappear and suppress the weeds, you know, while you're reclaiming that space. That's great. Yeah. Well my youngster isn't that young anymore. He's eighteen <laughs> now. But I will as as the question was on Earth Day what we do every day. You know, it's really about electric car. We have an electric car. He was a very engaged thirteen year old in the uh, shopping and buying of the of the car he was very particular about the different you know ranges and yeah. the plug-in you know levels and such and so I just remember that like you know having my uh my son be uh, more engaged in that process and that's it carries forward you know we we fight over use of the electric car you know like who, well how far are you going well how far do you need to go because we have another car as well but the idea of like uh just, you know, using the electric car to its full capacity Absolutely. is what we try to do. Yeah, Yeah, I think, it, you know, again, it's just that awareness. And that was really about kind of Earth Day every day. It's, it's certainly about the behaviors and those making a collective impact. But really, it's kind of that mind shift, right, to think yeah. about, like, how's my impact? How, what am I doing? And how's that impacting the world around me? And then figuring out how you can make those small changes, like how far am I going, right? Should I take the electric car? Could I walk? You know, like, can we start a composting system here? instead of having yeah. to have a truck come and take it away. So those are I, all... just I just read a blurb uh, today about a person who said, you know, Earth Day every day is really, it's not multiple choice. It's all of the above, you know, right. it's not, it's not compete, you know, with our right. initiatives here. You know, it's not like the electric car or backyard composting exactly. or preserve your paint. It's like, just do all in each one of your things, do what you can, you know? Absolutely. So, and that's always what we advocate. Do what works for you because that's what's going to make it last and that's going to add right. up to a big difference over the long haul. So, all right, folks. Well, we love hearing from you. Thank you guys so much for all of your questions. Please keep them coming. Um, and if you guys have questions about paint care or anything else, make sure to hit us up on social media or send us an email at askevelyn at seattle.gov. And we hope to see you guys next week. And with that, I'm Becca Fong. And remember, life's simpler with less stuff. And I'm Pat Kaufman. Remember to recycle right. We'll see you next time. Bye, guys. Bye.